Good evening, and thank you for joining us for Crumb News at 5. I'm Janelle Finch. Mark and Whitney have the night off. A bill banning assault weapons in Washington state is making significant headway in the legislature. House Bill 1240 already passed in the House and will go before a Senate committee tomorrow morning. Crem 2's Amanda Rowley joins us live in the studio to explain the impact of if this bill passes. This bill to ban assault weapons in Washington state passed the House two weeks ago. That's a big deal because that's the first time a proposal like this has passed a chamber of the Washington legislature. House Bill 1240 would prohibit the manufacture, importation, distribution, sale, or offer for sale of any assault weapon in the state. The legislation was brought forward at the request of Governor Jay Inslee and Attorney General Bob Ferguson. They say this is necessary legislation to make Washington safer. When the bill passed the House, the Attorney General released a statement saying the House put public safety above the interest of the gun lobby adding the sale of what he calls weapons of war must stop. But owner of sharpshooting Jeremy Ball isn't convinced. There's no statistical analysis that shows that there's any correlation between a reduction in gun violence and the banning of semi-automatic rifles. He opposes this bill not just as a business owner, but out of concern for law-abiding citizens who might violate this proposed legislation unknowingly. The wording in this bill is exactly the reason why people are going to find out later down the road that they can't pass guns on to family members, that they can't inherit things. To be clear, the bill does not prohibit the possession of assault weapons, but it does prohibit transferring them. The term assault weapon characterizes a wide range of weapons in the language of the bill. Ball pulled a few of those guns for us to show the wide range of firearms the bill restricts. This is a shotgun. These are typically used as like home security devices. This is a Ruger 10-22. This is an AR-15. Specifically, this is obviously what the legislature is after is any gun that looks like this because this is so sweeping will make up 30 to 40 percent of our business and absolutely have an impact on us as an organization going forward. Could you keep it open at that point? We hope so. Among those in favor of the bill is Representative Marcus Riccelli from Spokane. He has not been able to return our request for comment today about his support for this legislation. Now, the Senate Committee on Law and Justice is holding a public hearing on the bill tomorrow at 8 a.m. Amanda Rowley, Krem 2 News. A Spokane County jury found a Post Falls man guilty of killing a cyclist he hit with his tow truck three years ago. We, the jury, find the defendant, Jonathan D. Reiser, guilty of the crime of vehicular homicide as charged. The jury reached the verdict this afternoon after only a few hours of deliberations. In June of 2020, Jonathan Reiser struck a cyclist on State Route 206 near Green Bluff. The woman he hit died a few days later due to brain injuries suffered from the incident. Finally, just wishing mom could be here. There's like our minds can focus on other stuff now. We can start like processing a little more, grieving a little more. Riser was not in custody during the trial, but following this conviction, he will now be in Spokane County Jail until his sentencing on April 28th. According to prosecutors, Riser could face as many as nine years in prison. In other top headlines, Spokane police are looking for information about a man found dead on a remote hill near Highbridge Park. 57-year-old Nicholas Wright's death is now being investigated by the major crimes team. They say the scene indicates his death was possibly under criminal circumstances. The medical examiner has ruled it a homicide. SPD is now asking anyone with any information about Wright or who saw anything suspicious near the scene to email the detective. That email is on your screen. Meanwhile, the Spokane County Sheriff's Office is investigating a house fire that left one dead just outside of Deer Park last night. It's unknown how the fire was started or if anyone else was inside at the time. This is a developing story and we'll continue to bring you updates as we learn them. And this is a heads up for drivers, a construction alert for you this evening. Both directions of I-90 between Spokane Valley and Liberty Lake will be closed from 7 p.m. tonight until 4 in the morning. They will also be closed during the same time tomorrow night. If you're driving through the work zone, keep in mind the temporary legal speed limit will be reduced to 60 miles per hour. 
taking a break from the headlines to talk about weather. Today we enjoyed another beautiful day across the inland northwest with temperatures hovering in the upper 50s. Let's send it over to Cody Proctor who has more on what changes we might be seeing for the rest of the week. Hi Cody. Hi Janelle. Yeah, we're keeping track of some changes because it is spring. We have all kinds of weather when it comes to spring. So today that meant the sunshine and the warm temperatures. I'm just going to linger on the shot of downtown Spokane. I mean, just how beautiful it, it, that is. I mean, I'll just fangirl over this any day of the week. Temperatures right now at the Spokane Airport currently at 57 degrees, even warmer compared to the same time yesterday. Winds are calm at this time and around the region. We're mostly in those upper 50s, low 60s. Deer Park, you're at 60 degrees. Moscow, you're hanging out at 51, 57 right now in Wenatchee. Our winds for the most part, relatively calm to light. Looks like though we're seeing some double digit wind speeds in both Deer Park and in OMAC at this time. On our Doppler, pretty quiet at the moment. And the next 12 hours looks to see those clear conditions stay with us into our late evening hours, but we start to see some changes moving in first with the clouds temperatures tomorrow morning looking to be in the mid 30s. So keep that in mind that we are still expecting some chilly temperatures. You'll still need to have that jacket. But here are those changes. We are expecting that chance for some showers tomorrow, potentially breezy winds, upper 40s. Later on in the week, might even see some chances for some snow showers as well. So we're not quite done with all the winter weather just yet.